My journey uh, really involved going and doing electronic engineering, uh, doing a bachelor's degree at Cardiff. Uh, when I was coming towards the end of my degree, I was looking at my options, um, and I had a good opportunity to start a PhD in an interesting area, um, and I had a, a good industrial sponsor uh, to do that with as well. Um, I had a really good time doing my, my PhD, uh, and when I was coming to finish that, I was looking at my options, uh, whether to work in the UK or, or go abroad, and I thought, uh, being young, it would be a good opportunity to, to go and live and work abroad. Um, I tried that for a couple of years and it, it went really well. It was a good experience and a chance to meet a lot of people uh, from different countries and have a, a different work environment. Uh, then I was looking for a new challenge and decided to come back to the UK. Uh, I think there are similarities uh, between the UK um, and working abroad uh, in terms of engineering. Um, probably engineers uh, abroad uh, get a little bit more respect than, than they do over here. Um, but in terms of the attitude and, and working with people, um, there's still a good amount of camaraderie. You still get to work on technical interesting, interesting problems. Problem solving um, definitely is, is one of the inspirations for doing engineering. I think engineers are probably problem solvers at heart. Um, and you know, the ability to create something practical, uh, the, uh, the fact that you can take a design, uh, you see it on your computer screen for, for several months, then it, it goes off and comes back as a physical product that you can hold and touch. I think there's something very satisfying about that. Uh, my most proud moment uh, would be getting my first amplifier back uh, that I designed for my PhD um, because I had to do all of it myself, um, including some of the manufacture and, and soldering of the components. Um, so to actually then switch it on for the first time, find that it, that it worked and that it, it did uh, what I expected it to, um, that, was, that was a really satisfying moment. Getting through the, the viva of my PhD um, was a big achievement. Uh, a PhD is a very personal thing uh, and, and having done it for four years, uh, you know, at some point you think there's not really an end in sight. So when you actually come to that point, um, it's definitely a very satisfying feeling. Yeah, there were a lot of challenges with, with my PhD. Now I had a good supervisor and good industrial support, which, which made it easier. Um, but of course, you're working on things that haven't been done before. So there are uh, always going to be unexpected problems. Um, also, the fact that although you have all this support, it's really your PhD. Uh, so the impetus is on you to motivate yourself to, to get through it and complete it. Um, I think really, rather than there being key people, um, what really inspired me to get into engineering was when I was at college, I was studying maths and physics. Um, and I obviously enjoyed that, uh, but you know I really wanted to do uh, something practical with it. And I actually took part in the engineering education scheme, which was organized by the Royal Academy of Engineering. Um, and that partnered with uh, an industrial company where they set uh, a challenge for the year and you do it um, uh, at the same time as your studies. Uh, so that was really the first experience I had of engineering and going into the company and seeing what they do and really that's what I thought, well, this is, this is what I want to be doing. As part of my PhD, I presented several papers at international conferences. Um, that's a really, really nice experience. It's very nerve-wracking um, because you're standing up in front of a group of experts who have all got more experience and know more than you. Um, but then the fact that you can stand up and talk about your work and, and people acknowledge that it's, it's new research and it's, and it's innovative um, is a really great feeling. It's also a good chance to meet people, um, which, is, which is very important for, for a, an engineering career. So I work as an engineering consultant and what that means is that uh, we get a variety of different projects to work on. Um, once one project's over, we don't necessarily know who our next client is going to be, so we could be working on something completely different. Um, also working in quite a small company, uh, we get to do a range of design and test and measurement. We get involved with talking to the manufacturers as well. Um, and we also do the interfacing with the clients as well. So really day to day it's, it's very varied. Um, and between one month and the next I could be working on something completely different. And some, one project could be something familiar that I've worked on before and I'm quite comfortable with. And the next project could be something that's completely different. I'd never worked on it before and, and you have to learn really quickly. So that's very motivating, it's very stimulating. Yeah, I think it's important to try and inspire the next generation of engineers. Uh, I think what we see when we try and recruit people is that there is a shortage of engineers, um, and I think that's, that's true um, throughout the whole of the engineering industry, not just electronics. Um, so, you know, if I can help to inspire people and, and get them involved in engineering uh, as a career, then, you know, that, that's a great thing. So I guess probably one of the biggest problems um, that I've had to, to face in engineering is, you know, working on... Um, big projects like the ones I'm working on at the moment, we design um, microwave and RF um, circuits and normally we need these to work first time. So there's a real challenge and you have to be very diligent in making sure the design work is done properly um, in order to make sure it's going to work first time. Um, 
if you design a circuit on a PCB, for example, you can always go and change a resistor or a capacitor value. Um, maybe if it wasn't working at quite the right frequency that you wanted it to, um, you have the opportunity to do something. When we design MIMICs and RFICs, um, we don't have that luxury, so we have to make sure that we get it first, first time right. Um, so really having the discipline to, to do the design work diligently, it's, it's a real challenge, um, and there's a lot of pressure uh, before actually sending that design off to go and, go and get it made.